Let's do this. This is the closest decision I have ever had to make, ever. The Sika sword. The Sika is a short but dangerous sword widely used by gladiators in ancient Rome. Since it was customary to fight with armor, the blade featured a sharp curve specifically designed to get around an opponent's shield. A gruesome killer, warriors would use its lethal inner edge to sever limbs or the blade's deadly point to hook into the jaw and pierce through the head. Today, the sick is often depicted in popular culture during graphic gladiator battles, most notably in the television series Spartacus, Blood and Sand. Bladesmiths, this is a kill test. I'll take your Sika sword and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Frank, you're up first. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Nice. <laughs> well, Frank, your blade is sharp. In combat, the Sika is sometimes using its curve to pull away the sword and come in. In this case, he pulled away the head. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Tony, you ready? Mm-hmm. Let's have some fun. <laughs> All right, Tony, this is a scary Sika sword. On the initial hack into the chest cavity, it penetrated so deep, it totally demolished this ballistics dummy. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Tony's blade just performs great on this thing. I mean, even though they both will kill, it's just looked a little bit more violent. So it has me a little, uh, a little nervous. Gentlemen, this is the strength test. In order to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm going to attack these shields. Remember, this test is all about what the shields do to your weapons and not what your weapons do to the shields. Frank, you're up first. Are you ready? Yep. Let's do this. <laughs> well, Frank. Your edge held up perfectly. All right. It's still straight. It's still sharp. Everything is still tight and solid. Well done. Thank you. Tony, you're up next. Are you ready? Yes. Well, Tony. Your edge held up perfectly as well. Razor sharp. I see no problem with the edge from the shield. You know, a nice solid blade. Well done. Thank you. Good job, man. All right, gentlemen. Now it's the sharpness test. I'll be cutting through this sugar cane. One cut with the front edge of your blade, one cut with the back edge. All right, Frank, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yes. All right, Frank, right off, your blade's got a really nice balance to it. You can see on that first cut, it kind of pulled in my hand, but it's still a good feel. On the back cut, blew right through. Any gladiator using this, be quick, be deadly. Well done. Thank you. All right, Tony, you're up. You ready for this? Yep. So, Tony, is it sharp? Yes. It's very sharp, and it cut very nicely. It's still right, still tight. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, over the course of three rounds, both of you has displayed excellent bladesmithing talents. However, in this arena of competition, there can only be one champion. Tony, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. Frank, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Frank, first up, I want to say that there are no losers in this round, but we can only pick one winner. Both weapons were very sharp, 
Both weapons are very strong, but the sickle was a gladiator's weapon, and your weapon was outperformed in the kill test. And for that reason, we're sending you home. I totally understand. Frank, please surrender your blade. I'm fine with this result. They both killed, but he's uh, really killed. <laughs> Tony's already invited me to come up there and forge. He's going to show me some stuff. I'll know Tony probably the rest of my life. Tony, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion. And that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. How do you feel right now? I feel pretty good. All right. Well, Tony, please present your weapon to the judges. Just a <laughs> OK, I'm still here. It's not a dream. <laughs> I won. It's awesome. How do you put it in words? Came a saw and I conquered. A pair of Gununting swords. As one of the weapons issued to the Philippine Military Special Forces units, the Gununting swords have proven to be effective and deadly weapons. The word Gununting translates to scissors, and the inward curve of the blade's design allows for deeper cuts while also proving the user with a thin, lightweight weapon. When paired together as a sword and dagger, the longer sword serves as offensive long-range weapon, while the shorter sword serves to be defensive post-water weapon. The intimidating dual swords are built for brutal combat as well as navigating thick jungle terrain. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out how lethal your weapons are, I'm going to take your weapons and deliver some slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? Tear it up, you mad dog. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian, let's talk about your Ginuntings here. First up, for Ginuntings, they're a little bit on the heavier side, but that lends itself to cut deep into the pig carcass. Your handle construction is smooth, and that gives me good retention. And overall, sir, your Ginuntings will kill. All right, Chris, your turn. So you ready for this? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. All right, Chris, let's talk about your Gidun things here. First up, what I like about your weapon here is the balance. It's nicely distributed. The edges you have here are sharp. As you can see, pretty much cut a lot of this pig up. Overall, sir, your Gidun things, you will kill. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test, the bamboo chop. To test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be taking your ganunting and chopping into our bamboo target here. Now remember, this isn't about what your ganuntings do to that target, but what that target can do to your ganunting. Brian, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. You ain't got nothing else to do this afternoon. <laughs> All right, Brian, first off, they've got some heft to them, but they don't feel bad. They, they, they actually swing pretty good. Your blade picked up just a teeniest roll. And then on the smaller of the two blades, there's, a again, just the smallest deflection. Other than that, they held up beautifully. Well done. Thank you very much. Chris, you ready to play? Sure. <laughs> All right, Chris, right off. Your handle design for me is just about perfect. As far as swinging these things, man, they're super light. The balance is really nice on these. I don't feel anything 
on your edge when I run my fingernail up this thing. No deflections, no rolls. So good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, we know your blades can kill, and we know they're strong. Now it's time to find out just how sharp your blades are. This is the sharpness test, the animal hide slice. Now to find out how sharp your weapons are, I'm gonna take your genuntings, and I'm gonna thrust and slash across this animal hide. Brian, you're up first, you ready for this? Absolutely. All right, let's do this. All right, Brian, the edges you have here are sharp. Every cut over there is quite clean, no jagged edges, and overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you, sir. Chris, your turn, so you ready? Yep. All right, let's do this. All right, Chris, first up, the grinds that you have here are perfect for this kind of cut because there is no resistance. Overall, sir, your genuntings, it'll cut. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, we had three tests. We got two Smiths, but we can only have one winner. You guys both performed very well, but as you know, only one of you can go home the title of Forge and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. The judges have made the decision and today's Forge and Fire champion is Chris. Congratulations. Brian, unfortunately, your blade just didn't make the cut. Dave Baker's going to tell you why. Brian, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that competitions like this are the ones we love to see, where Smiths bring back weapons that are so closely matched. This came down to the smallest things. Chris's blade was a little bit sharper than yours. It didn't take any damage. You did a great job. It's a beautiful blade. Thank you. Well, Brian, you're clearly a very talented smith, and your work speaks for itself on that. But unfortunately, your time here has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. I put forth my best effort, but it is what it is. Chris, congratulations. You are today's forge and fire champion. You got yourself a check for $10,000. My blades performed very well. I thought it would be awesome for my kids just to prove to them that if you put yourself out there and put the work in, you can accomplish what you're after. My name is Chris O'Brien, and I am the Forged and Fire Champion. The Schiavona. Rising to popularity in Italy during the 16th and 17th centuries, the Schiavona became the trusted weapon for mercenaries recruited to guard the Venetian head of state. The sword's long blade included multiple fullers to lighten its weight, while its straight double edge made it conducive for deadly thrusts and cuts. The most eye-catching feature of this blade was its basket hilt with multiple pieces of steel that intertwined to protect the hand from brutal slashes. Its attractive yet deadly qualities are why the Schiavona can still be found today in popular games such as Assassin's Creed. All right, Bladesmiths, as you can see, I'm still recovering from an injury. So, to be my arm today and to have the pleasure of testing your weapon, I'd like to bring back one of my favorite students, my brother, RJ Markaida. All right, Brad, the one issue I have about your handle right here, it did cause some issues by rubbing against the thumb right there. But more importantly, it is a sharp blade for slashing and thrusting. It will kill. Cool. Yeah. Jeff, you ready? Let's do this. Ooh. One right here. Okay. All right, Jeff. A little bit on the inside, 
of your basket hilt right there, it did dig in into his knuckles. But overall, if we're talking about a killing blade here with good balance and the kind of destruction it did, it will kill. Thank good you. job. All right, bladesmiths, next up is a strength test. Ben? To test your Shibona's basket and blade, I'm gonna punch into these terracotta pots and then chop into these birch logs. And remember, it's not what happens to the vase or the wood, it's what happens to your blade. Brad, you're up first, you ready? My Shivona is definitely ready. Once I started chopping into that log, it was just going the whole time. There is a tiny little deformation right there. It's pretty narrow. You can hear it, you know. All in all, it's sharp and it's a good chopper. Nicely done. Uh, yeah. All right, Jeff, you're up. You ready? Let's do this. Jeff, this is a heck of a chopper. It's got a lot of forward weight. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but not too much in general and in total. It held up very well. Nice job. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is our sharpness test, a rope and sandbag slash. What I'll do to test the edges of your blade is slice the rope, releasing the sandbag, then cut the bag. What we want to see are good clean cuts through the rope and clean cuts through the bag. Brad, you're up first. You ready? Ready. Oh. <laughs> okay, Brett, on the cuts, pass through the rope with no problem. This blade has a beautiful edge, a fine cutter. Excellent, well done. Thank you. Jeff, you ready? Let's get it on. All right, let's do this. I think right now we're almost dead even. Couldn't be any closer. Jeff, what I like about your blade is its look, this industrial look. It's cool. It didn't slice all the way through the bag, but it cuts very cleanly. Nicely done. Thank you. Brad, Jeff, you are both extraordinary weaponsmiths, but there can only be one forged and fire champion. Jeff, congratulations. You are our newest forged and fire champion. Brad, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Brad, this is probably the most difficult hilt design we have sent any of our Smiths home to do. And you both did a really nice job. And we had to look at the finest of details. And that was that rolled edge you took in the strength test. And that's why we've got to send you home. Brad, please surrender your weapon. I did the best that I could, and I put every single bit of effort into my blade. And Jeff, I hope we become friends forever. I definitely have a lot to learn from you. And I'm just so close to being the champion. Jeff, you are the new Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel? My heart's pounding out of my chest. This is what I came here to do. Please present your weapon to the judges. I feel freaking awesome. This is everything. This is what I wanted. It's perfect. I heard Brendan might have called me Magic Mike, but I tell you what, the magic is floating, baby. <laughs> the magic is floating. The Sword of Saladin. <laughs> this 12th century sword belonged to Saladin, a powerful Muslim leader and the first sultan of Egypt and Syria. 
Believed to be forged from steel far superior than any other weapon of the time, the sword is rumored to be the sharpest in history. Featuring a thin edge geometry, the lightweight curved blade is designed to effortlessly deliver deep cuts and lethal chops. With the help of this deadly weapon, Saladin founded a dynasty that ruled much of the Middle East for the 12th and 13th centuries. The sword is a prominent feature of a statue memorializing Saladin that stands in front of the ancient city of Damascus in Syria. Bladesmiths, welcome to the Kiel Test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapons will do, I will take your version of Saladin's sword and deliver some lethal blows on this ram carcass. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? No, but I guess you got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Brian, let's talk about your version of Saladin's sword here. I noticed you have something inscribed in there. What is that? That is Saladin in Arabic. Very cool, very cool. Now, your edge. You have a sharp edge. This is a very tough ram carcass. On the neck chops, it cut deeply. And of course, on the body, it cut through in three slices. Overall, sir, your weapon? Full kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Walter, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's make some ram chops. All right, Walter, first up, your edge. This is a wicked sharp grind. Actually, when, you know, it sings to me when I just touch it and pull it out. It is sharp. Cutting through hair, a thick spine, and into the meat. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test. Now, Saladin's army in the 12th century would have faced off against men wearing chain mail, carrying shields, and probably a helmet. Now, to test your blade's construction, overall durability, I'll be hacking into our armored warriors here. Brian, you're up. Go ahead. I am rather nervous. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Wow. Whew. All right, Brian. Blades this sharp and with this kind of an edge geometry often take a fairly substantial rolling when they go up against armor. Yours really didn't. I mean, there's like three spots I can feel if I run my fingernail along it. Just beautiful job. Well done. Thank you, sir. All right, Walter, you're up. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. All right, Walter, there's a little bit of a glinting and a little bit of a rough spot here, here, and maybe here. Other than that, this blade still has a wicked edge on it. Curvature's really, really nice. You nailed it. Scale, right on. Well done. Thank you, sir. You bet. Close race. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take your weapon and I will cut through these Egyptian rugs. Now I'm looking for clean cuts. Brian, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Brian, let's talk about your blade here. It is razor sharp. As I punctured and cut through the carpet, there were very clean cuts. Overall, sir, your edge, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Walter, are you ready? Absolutely. Let's do this. Look at that ring. All right, Walter, let's talk about your weapon here. Razor sharp. It was easy to penetrate, very easy to drag across. These are very clean cuts. Overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. Thank you, sir.
Well, guys, you both brought us immaculate weapons that performed almost identically. But the judges do need to make a decision and choose which of you will be crowned Forge and Fire champion. While they deliberate, I'm going to have to ask you to step off the Forge floor. It's nerve wracking being up against somebody who's as good as Walter. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, guys, what do you think? What I saw, that's about as close as it gets. These are two weapons that are so closely matched. Um, they're both beautifully made. Uh, I think they tested out uh, virtually identically. Yeah. One blade stood out just a little bit when I was doing the sharpness test, because it sang to me. Hearing it rip through the carpet and that quintessential bing. OK, so you guys are on the same page then? I think so. All right. I knew Brian was going to be stiff competition, and he absolutely brought it, and I feel like I brought it too. All right, gentlemen, the judges have made the decision. Today's champion is Walter. What? What? <laughs> I'm just a jock. <laughs> I can't believe this. Now, unfortunately, Brian, that means you did not win today. This is the closest decision I have ever had to make, ever. Brian, you brought us an absolutely beautiful weapon. It tested fantastically. It felt fantastic in my hand. We made this decision based on the smallest of details, and it came down to the curvature of the blade. Yours just has a little wobble in it. The other doesn't. It's that close. You should be incredibly proud of that blade, and it was an absolute pleasure to be able to wield it. Thank you very much. Brian, unfortunately, that means you didn't make the cut today. I'm going to have to ask you to head off to Forge Floor. Bro, it's been an honor. I'm a little disappointed to not be in the winner's circle, but very proud of the fact that Dave said it was one of the hardest decisions they've ever had to make. I feel I did pretty good. Well, Walter, congratulations, buddy. You are the Forge and Fire champion. You'll be going out of here with a check for $10,000. How do you feel? I don't even know right now. <laughs> <laughs> I won. <laughs> I can't believe it. 10 grand is nothing to sneeze at, but I want to take a portion of it and donate it to some kind of cancer organization. Cancer's taken a lot of people away from me that I care about. It took my dad, and I want to be able to give back a little bit. What a wild ride. <laughs> the copy line. According to legend, the Compilon was the sword that killed explorer Ferdinand Magellan at the Battle of Mactan in what is now the Philippines. The heavy spur-tipped sword was used by island warriors in battle and could chop off two heads in one swing. The single-edged blade could also cut through its scabbard with no resistance, allowing it to be quickly wielded without being unsheathed. The Compilon's distinctively carved wooden hilt was sometimes embellished with strands of hair offering a unique and appealing appearance for this otherwise deadly weapon. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be chopping through our cat's cradle of rope here. Now, Todd, you're up first. You ready? Lord, help me. All right, Todd. This blade has all the weight right here. You know, it's a weapon that's designed to be used one or two-handed, but controlling all that forward weight definitely puts this as a two-hand only sword. It's a good looking piece, and it definitely is a cutter. Michael, you're up, you ready? Let's do it. Still a very heavy weapon. I would have zero confidence swinging this one-handed that it wouldn't get away from me. But the weight distribution on your blade is further back, which gave me quite a bit more control to chop those ropes. It's definitely a cutter, so good job. Nicely done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. I'm going to take your campilan and deliver lethal blows on this big carcass. Todd, you're up first. You ready? I sure am.
All right, Todd, the swing over here, almost cut all the way. And of course, with an easy swing on the way back, it cut the pig in half. Your compilan will kill. Thank you. All right, Michael, your turn. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'm excited. I want to see my sword cut through a pig. All right, Mike. So even though it is a heavier blade, its counterbalance allows it to wield going forward and backward easily. So it was an easy recovery for the final chop. Overall, your campilan will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, gentlemen. To test the strength and durability of your blade, I'll be chopping into this green bamboo. I am praying that my edge holds up. I don't feel any damage whatsoever on the edge. It did a job on that bamboo and it's clean. Well done. Thank you. Michael, you ready? Let's do it. OK. I saw something, but it was just bamboo stuck to your blade. It's fine. There's no damage there. Your blade hasn't changed shape at all. Good job. Well done. Going in like this, and we're so close. Now it's up to the judges. It's their pick. And so I'm a little nervous. All right, Bladesmiths, from the moment you guys lit those coal forges until this moment, you've put in a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of stress. But in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. And that champion is Michael, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Todd, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Todd, this is what we judges expect in the third round. Two beautiful blades equally matched, but it comes down to the finer details. Your blade isn't as well balanced as that of your opponents and your design and detail were not as strong. So for those reasons, you have to let you go. I understand. Be proud of your work, Todd, because it was a close call. But please surrender your weapon. I never thought about making it this far. Well, this is the first sword I've ever made. I'm proud of what I did. Michael, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. All right, what's going on inside of there? It's surreal. Uh, wasn't expected starting this competition, but huge affirmation of my skills. Please present your weapon to the judges. It's surreal. It hasn't really set in yet. All the years that I've put into this hobby, this craft, and now to be here and be the Fortune Fire champion, it's pretty amazing. The Shamshir. Descending from the Sabre family of swords, the Shamshir, which means curved like the tiger's tail, first gained popularity in Persia and quickly spread throughout the former Ottoman Empire. Light and weight and easy to wield, this deeply curved sword featured a thin blade and a tapered tip that was most effective when delivering sweeping or hooking strokes and was sharp enough to slice adversaries in two. Although use of the sword declined in the 20th century, it was rebirthed as one of the main weapons of the protagonist in the film Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. To test the sharpness of your weapon, I'll be cutting through these three fish. Andrew, you're up first. Are you ready for this? There goes nothing. All right, so first thing, it's not a light sword, but the weight's where I want it to be. 
beautiful looking handle. Having said that, up here at the front, it's a little blocky, but it's definitely sharp. Well done. Thank you. All right, Tim, you ready for this? I'm ready. This blade is wonderfully fast and light. Your handle, I like the construction of it. What I have a problem with is this transition. The two materials, it creates a bit of a lip. If that wrap went all the way down, I think it would feel pretty good. Having said that, this is a beautiful piece, and it is definitely a cutter. Thank you. Next up is the kill test, and for that, I'll give you Doug. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your sham shearer and deliver slashes and a thrust on these pig carcasses. Andrew, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Andrew, your sham shear just became a sham wow. <laughs> <laughs> Your blade on the initial thrust penetrated easily and it lacerated cleanly into the carcass. Your weapon, sir, will kill. Good job. Thank you. Tim, it's your turn. Shall we have fun? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. All right, Tim. This is what a sham shear, I believe, should feel like. It definitely can thrust into the carcass. It hit bone. I felt it. I could feel it crunch. The edge here is sharp enough to lacerate through the carcass, cutting all the way through. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Next up is a strength test. Dave? Now, the Shamshire was a weapon that was used both on foot and on horseback. So to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm going to chop into these horse skulls three times. Andrew, are you ready for this? I guess. OK. Mm. So right off. I can feel a slight rolled section where the edge is just deformed a bit. But uh, other than that, held up beautifully. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Good smile, Tim. It's your turn. <laughs> Let's go. I can see where your edge has taken some deformation here. It's light and it's fast, but it looks to me as though your blades picked up a slight roll that way that I did not see before. Your blade goes off at a bit of an angle. Bladesmiths, a final decision has been made. Only one of you can be the Forged and Fire champion. And that champion is. Andrew, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be yes. receiving a check for $10,000. Yes. Tim, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Tim, this is the kind of third round weapon we love to see, something we can really put to the test. Now, both your weapons had handle issues. Both your weapons rolled an edge. Yours picked up a bend in that final strength test, and that's why we're letting you go home. But. That was a pleasure to use, and it's a weapon you should be proud of. Thank you, I am. Tim, please surrender your weapon. I enjoyed the competition immensely. It's been one of the highlights of my life. Andrew, congratulations. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Yes! I, mean, I definitely feel relieved. It feels great. I mean, I came here to win and prove to myself that I was able to do it and I can hang with these other guys with their credentials and whatnot. I don't have any of that. I'm just a guy from the woods, you know? <laughs> I'm a 
Maguro Bocho. Also known as the tuna sword, the Maguro Bocho is a specialized cutting tool designed to fillet massive bluefin tuna. This impressive blade is not your average kitchen cutlery. With a total length up to three feet long, these culinary swords were often hand forged by the same swordsmiths that make the iconic Japanese katana. They feature a thick spine and razor sharp edge that cuts effortlessly through any large fish. The Maguro Bocho is still used today by some Japanese chefs and can be seen on full display at some of Tokyo's iconic fish markets. All right, bladesmiths. To find out what kind of lethal damage your Maguro Bochos will do, I'll take your weapon and make some lethal cuts on these six different fishes. Testing your first. You ready for this? Let's make some sushi. All right, Justin, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, your edge. One and done for all the cuts here. It's a very sharp edge. I like the handle construction here. It's ovoid, so my hand matches nicely and wraps around it. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Doug, you're up next. You ready? Have at it. All right, Doug, first up, the handle construction. I really like the way you shaped your handle here, it's typical Japanese style. Now, it's a lighter blade, but your edge is so sharp, it cut cleanly through the fishes, easily. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thanks. All right, gentlemen, I think you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test. And we're calling this our bow staff attack. Now, Justin, your weapon is already locked in our device here, and I will be attacking it with our waxwood bow staffs. This test is not about what your blades do to that staff, what that staff's gonna do to your blade. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Okay. All right, Justin, um, you know, this is a brutal test for what is technically a large kitchen knife, but uh, you did very, very well. Right where my finger is, there's the smallest of chips, and it's, when I say smallest of chips, I mean it's really small. Everything else looks right and tight. All in all, you did a great job. You survived. Thank you. You bet. All right, Doug, you're up. You ready? <laughs> as ready as I can be. OK, because this is fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> So Doug, right off, this is a remarkably light. There is the slightest rough spot. But besides that, I don't see any deformation in your blade. Blade's as straight as it was when we started out. It's a good, solid piece. Well done. Thank you. So all right, gentlemen, two tests down, one test to go. All right, bladesmiths, we're cutting it close. We know that both your weapons can kill, and we know they're strong. Now it's time to find out how sharp they are. This is the sharpness test. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I will cut through these rolled up tatami mats. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what the edge of your weapon will do to these mats. Dustin, you up first. You ready for this? Rock and roll. All right, let's do that. All right, Justin, let's talk about the cuts here. Clearly, on the other cuts, they cut all the way through. On the last cut, almost, but just a little skid of that mat is hanging on. 
but it is a sharp edge. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Doug, your turn. So you ready? Let's see what this thing can do. Let's do it. All right, Doug, first cut just went so easy without a drag that it went into the next target. It is a very sharp weapon. It's very easy to wield, and it's light. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, I know I speak for the judges when I say this is exactly what we want to see. But as we know, only one of you is going to be leaving here, the Fortune Fire champion, with a check for $10,000. And today's Fortune Fire champion is Doug, congratulations, you won. Justin, unfortunately, you're not gonna be leaving with the win today, and Doug's gonna tell you why. Justin, on any other given competition, I can see your blade being a champion's blade. It is a beautiful blade. But today, your opponent's was just a little sharper, a little lighter, and faster to wield. Justin, again, thank you very much for your hard work, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to ask you to please leave the forge. Good job. Well, Doug, you are the Forge and Fire champion. Congratulations, right. man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. What are you going to get with that $10,000? Oh, I fell in love with the Forge Press. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I definitely want one of those of my own. I am ecstatic. You know, I put a lot of heart and soul into making that blade. And seeing it perform the way that it did was uh, just a really great confirmation about my abilities. And it's just making me want to make more knives.